So previously we talked about the wonders of the auto injector, how it makes my life so much easier. I can just put the sample into the sample vial, I can load it up into the auto sampler tray, and the auto injector will take care of everything else. It will take my sample over to the instrument, it will inject the sample into the instrument, and it will inject, hopefully, the proper amount. Okay, so we're still talking about the injector site. And what's coming up next is something called the glass insert. All right, so on the GC system, you typically have this round piece that sits up at the top with a hole in it. And that is where my syringe will go down into to fill up my sample into the machine. And then we said up underneath this port there is a piece of rubber and that piece of rubber is called the septum. And the purpose of the septum is to prevent the sample that I inject into this injector port from escaping and leaving out the other end. Now there is another piece up underneath the injector port that's pretty important. And this is, what does my sample get injected into? It's a piece that's glass that will hold your sample and that will eventually allow the sample to be injected into the machine. And up underneath the rubber septum, this piece of glass is called a glass insert. And the purpose of the glass insert is to kind of hold your sample here, but the glass insert has a piece of steel wool or cotton that is on the inside. Glass wool, I'm sorry. Glass wool. And this will help filter your sample before it goes into the machine. Now, when we say filter, what hopefully happens is that any contamination that might be here in your sample when you've injected it, well, hopefully that contamination will get lodged up on this piece of glass wool or whatever material that they decide to use in the glass insert. And it gets stuck there and it doesn't go any further. And then what happens is that your sample that was dirty, maybe, will go through the glass wool and you're only left with a pure sample now without any trash or contamination in it. Trash or contamination would be something that can't be volatile, it would be something that can't turn into a gas, and it would be something that can't go through the machine because of that. So very often when we replace this rubber septum we also typically replace the glass insert as well because this will get dirty and this will get trashy and contaminated and you don't want any of this residual stuff to be left over to be injected at a later date. So this gets dirty just like a normal filter maybe on your vehicle or your car. Uh, when you change the oil you typically change the filter as well and that's the same thing that we do here. So the glass inserts are very easy to change out. They're very easily accessible on the machine. Not a big deal at all uh, to uh, change out a glass insert. Uh, the glass inserts are all made a different way, but eventually what happens is that they all will lead to the column. The column gets attached up here to the very end, and this will be the column inside of the machine. All right, so doesn't really how they're made, Again, that depends on the manufacturer, that depends on the method, that depends on maybe personal preference. But bottom line is that it's a piece of glass that has a semi-filter on it that helps take care of any trashy contaminant that will not become volatile, that will just get stay lodged behind, and it stays in the glass insert so it doesn't get injected onto your machine. Now, the glass inserts... Uh, I told you they come in all different sizes and shapes, right? Okay, so here are a couple of different versions. 
uh, you actually see the um, shape of the glass tube being different on the inside. Uh, some of these are very tapered. So this allows maybe the sample to fully get injected onto the column without a problem. Uh, some of these uh, pieces of glass wool um, are just freely lodged in the glass insert itself. Uh, others are kind of uh, sandwiched inside of the glass insert so they don't move around on you or slide up and down as your needle continues to get injected into that glass insert over and over and over and over. Now, these are just diagrams of different glass inserts. Again, you'll know what your, your instrument needs when you decide to replace those pieces and parts because they all have the suggested one that they, that they take. Uh, here's a real picture of some glass inserts, right? So these things are very fragile, but, you know, they're not terribly expensive. So that's why we typically trade them out every time we change out a rubber septum, just to keep our system clean and to make sure there's no trashy contamination or anything else that comes around using a dirty glass insert. Uh, what will happen, I keep saying um, trashy and contamination, is that over time these materials could become loose. And if those materials could come loose, those could actually start to trickle inside of the column, little by little by little. And then on the chromatogram itself, over here to the side, you would see your traditional peaks that you would always see in a gas chromatogram, maybe something like that. But every now and then, if you've got contamination that's lodged back here and it's slowly coming into the column, you might see an extra small peak that begins to happen on the chromatogram because of that. And it would make you assume that there's another component in there that you traditionally haven't found, but actually it's just trash left over from the glass column because it's not been changed. So always change the glass column. It's a, a very, or a glass insert. It's a very good measure to take. It doesn't cost a lot of money to change those out. Uh, and it's always better to be safe than sorry. So in the next video, we're gonna talk about finally the actual injector port itself. Uh, we now have the individual pieces of the septum and the glass insert that we've talked about. And now we need to take a look at the different types of injectors that are on the machine. So that's what we'll talk about in the next video. There's four different types, and we'll try to do that under 10 minutes.